Hi people, hope you're doing well, hope you maintain the soaps. Today we are going to look at the problems faced in the abolition of slave trade. In the previous lessons we looked at the reasons why slave trade was abolished, the steps taken in the abolition of slave trade in East Africa, and today we are looking at those challenges the abolitionists faced in trying to end this trade in East Africa. And this is Mary Frances Zarango at Trinity College in Abingo. Uh, few personnel to enforce the, the abolition. Much as the British really wanted to end this slave trade, they needed a lot of people to help them do it. First of all, at the East African coast, in the interior, However, this was a challenge. They did not have enough people to do the abolition. So at the end of it all, they eventually could not reach many areas. And this was a disadvantage to the struggle against this trade. Then the Indian Ocean was too big. Remember, right from Mogadishu up to down there, up to Mozambique, that those were the outlets through which the slave ships would leave East Africa. So the Indian Ocean was too big to patrol. Much as they had put in place, one of the measures of ending this trade was to put in place and patrol ships to ensure that no slave ship left the East African coast. But then the Indian Ocean was too big to monitor. So many times it was very difficult for the abolitions to apprehend those who were trying to take out the slaves. Then also the East African coastline was too long, like it was with the Indian Ocean. The East African coastline was too long for the patrol ships to ensure that no slave ship left the East African coast. Unfortunately, on the side of the abolitions, they had slower ships, whereas the slave traders had faster ships, so they could easily uh, move off without being got by the slave trade abolitionists, and that was a challenge. Then we note that some European countries were not cooperative. We note that the British were in this idea first. Other European powers thought, thought and felt that the British were being hypocrites after benefiting from slavery to improve, to industrialize. Now they were also enforcing it on them. So some of these other European countries, like the French, the Portuguese, the Spanish continued with this trade and they were not supportive of the abolition of slave trade and this turned out to be a challenge. In particular, with the French, they made it, uh, uh, they, 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 were, they did not respond to the treaties that were signed by the British. Then slave trade was very profitable. There was no way you were going to tell someone to stop a trade where he was not using a lot of profit. You just organize a war, you get a, 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 an item, and you sell off that item expensively. So to the many people who were benefiting from this trade, there was no way they could just give up that trade. So the profitability of slave trade meant that very few people were willing to give it up. Then uh, the abolitions faced a problem of inadequate funds. First of all, they needed funds to, to, to pay the people who were trying to do that work for them. And then in one of the measures of ending slave trade, they had to compensate. for You set a, set a, a slave free, you're given uh, some money in return. But they did not have all these funds, and this turned out to be a challenge. Then the geographical barriers in the interior. This meant that if we were to stop slave trade, they were not going to stop at the East African coast alone. They had to go into the interior where the slaves were being got from. However, there are natural barriers like rivers, mountains, hills, made it difficult for the abolitions to end the trade in the interior where the slaves were being got from. Then, unfortunately, the tribes in the interior were very hostile. For example, the Nandi, they were not ready to let any foreigner pass through their area. So this meant that however much the abolitions would have wanted to stop this slave trade, 
they were not going to do so because the people in the interior were not hospitable and this turned out to be a challenge. Unfortunately, the slave traders moved in big numbers and that alone gave them, gave them protection against this abolitions and this turned out to be a challenge in the struggle to end slave trade. We note that by the time they, they were trying to stop the slave trade in East Africa, the transport and communication network had not been developed. So this meant they had to pass in forests and so on. And this would take them some time to get into the interior. And this was a challenge. Yet many of the abolitionists feared getting into the interior because of tropical diseases like malaria, smallpox, sleeping sickness. So many of them ended up staying at the East African coast. Yet this was not going to yield results if the the ending of this trade did not stop in, did not start in the interior. And yet others feared the harsh tropical climate they were not used to. So this meant that very few British were willing to come to East Africa to stop this trade. And then those who were willing to stop this trade lacked knowledge of the geographical knowledge of the interior. Where do you go? Whom to whom do you go to? And even sometimes when they would ask for directions, they would in the, the, the people in the interior would intentionally misdirect them. And this turned out to be a disadvantage to their struggle. Yet in the interior they were faced with wild animals like hyenas, lions, which many of them were not ready to to go to those areas. Then Many would have wanted to stop slave trade, but then the movement from the interior to the East African coast necessitated the use of slaves to slave transport to move commodities from the interior to the to the to, to, to the coast and vice versa. But without an alternative source of transport, there was no way you would stop the people from using slave transport and likewise without giving people another alternative source of income instead of slave trade many were not willing to give up their trade and this became a challenge to those who tried to abolish slave trade and then the sultans were reluctant to stop their trade the sultans at the east african coast had monopolized this trade for quite some time right from the days of saidi saidi and later on his sons bagash and karif this was the trade they knew. This was the only trade they could, they had mastered in. So they were reluctant to stop the trade in that even with the treaties they signed, they were not ready to respect them. And this turned out to be a challenge. Then there was a problem of communication, language barrier. We're looking at the British. Many people in the interior could not understand English and even some could not understand Chiswahili. So it was very difficult to convince people to stop the trade when you lacked a means of communication. And then to many of the Africans, slavery was common practice, even before the coming in of the Arabs to, to really take outside, to really take the Africans outside of East Africa. Many people had had, had slaves in their homes. It was part of culture. So now it was very difficult to convince these same Africans that we should end this old tradition and many of them were not ready to give it up. In conclusion, the challenges faced in the abolition of slave trade were political, social and economic. And then I'm going to leave you with that activity. Why was it difficult? to abolish slave trade in East Africa. And then, good enough, despite all those challenges, slave trade eventually was abolished. The other time we were looking at the steps taken, we noted by 1920, when the British were taking control in the whole of East Africa, they had ended slave trade and slavery in East Africa. And as a result of this abolition of slave trade in East Africa, the population increased. There was no more human export. No more people were taken out of East Africa. So this meant that without slave rights, without slave wars, the population increased. And then for those trading societies that had depended much, on those societies that had depended much on slave trade, 
there was serious decline. Those trading societies like the Nyamwezi, the Yao, the Akamba, the Buganda, Punyoro, all of them declined in economic importance. Then, as an alternative to slave trade, legitimate trade was promoted. When we talk about legitimate trade, this was the trade in legal trade items. And because there were no more slave rights, there were no more wars in order to get slaves, slaves. There was improved stability and insecurity in the interior of East Africa. And because of the promotion of legitimate trade, there was development of agriculture, where now raw materials had to be got. Um, acceptable trade items had to be worked on. And so we see development of agriculture, where many cash crops were grown East Africa. Then the African dignity and respect was revived. We note that initially before, at the time of slave trade, many Africans were looked at as trade items. Now, with the ending of the slave trade, the African as a human being was now respected. And immediately after the ending of slave trade, and in the process of ending slave trade, many foreigners started coming to East Africa. First, the, 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 the explorers, the missionaries who came to preach against this trade, the traders who came up with the idea of an alternative trade in the names of the chartered companies, the IB company, the German East African company, and eventually the colonialists. Then we also note that the former slave trade routes eventually developed into major highways. The people who were to build the Uganda Railway, the people who were to build the roads from the East African coast to the interior eventually followed the former slave trade routes into East Africa. And then with the coming in of the Christian, Christian missionaries to preach against slave trade, many people embraced Christianity, which preached equality, which preached treating each other as brothers instead of slaves. Then the ending of slave trade led to the decline of the long distance trade. We should take note that slaves were one of the major trade items in the long distance trade, and without them, the trade had to decline. Unfortunately, for those people who had involved in this trade for quite some time, they eventually lost their jobs. Remember when we were looking at the roles of Africans in this trade, others were interpreters, others would be collectors, others were security men, others were porters, others were providers of accommodation, others were security guards, and so on. So without this trade, many of them lost their jobs. And we note that when the trade was ended, Many of the slaves did not have where to go. So the people who ended this trade decided to put up homes for their freed slaves, especially those who didn't have where to go. And many of these homes were set up in Bagamoyo, Rabai, Impia, and many other places. And many roads and rail lines were put in place to replace slave transport. And that is why the Uganda Railway was built. Then for those leaders who had seriously gained a lot of wealth and power from this trade, without the trade, they lost the same. And we noted that cloth growing in Zanzibar had developed because of the presence of cheap labor in form of slaves. So without this slave labor, there was a decline in cloth growing. And eventually, the ending of slave trade contributed to the colonization of East Africa. We have already noted how many foreigners, the missionaries, the traders, and eventually colonialists came in East Africa under the guise of ending slave trade. And as it was, they took over the administration in East Africa. And when they took over the administration in East Africa, the Africans lost their independence to the the effects of the abolition of slave trade 
were both positive and negative. They were political, economic, and social. You're going to look at that activity. How did the abolition of slave trade affect the people of East Africa? Next, we shall be looking at the European activities in East Africa after the slave trade, after these trades exposing East Africa to the foreigners, they started coming in. And next time, we shall be looking at first the explorers. For more information, you will visit the link below. Stay safe, stay good. Until we meet again. Bye.